Well, welcome back. This is Thursday and the second part of our podcast this week. I'm Rod Arders. I'm the Director of Student Ministry at Huntersville United Methodist Church. And with me is our good friend, Steve Altry, <laughs> pastor of Denver United Methodist. Just at least across. I think I still am. Still, still in good standing with us. So <laughs> as we're far as I know. And Paul is on vacation, so we're just uh, covering in for him and talking about the movement of the Holy Spirit, the acts of the Holy Spirit through the, the, the book of Acts and just how he played a prominent role in, in several individuals uh, throughout the book. Mm -hmm. And then this week we're talking about Stephen, yep. the role he played in Stephen's life. And uh, of course, yesterday we talked about uh, Stephen's selection, his service, his faith. Uh, and now we get to how Stephen comes to this really dramatic mm. moment and this dramatic end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, was, I, I think of Stephen as a, as a truth teller. Mm -hmm. You saw it in the beginning or yesterday um, when we talked about the passage where he basically gave a history lesson mm -hmm. to the Sanhedrin. And in that, it, it wasn't just a Bible story. It wasn't and, just a history lesson. Yeah, and if you're wondering what Stephen's major in college <laughs> yeah. was, it had to be history. It had to be history. Uh, uh, I myself am a Stephen. I'm right. also a history major. So uh, I'm not saying I'm just like this guy, but... You know, yeah. well, I'll take what I can yeah. get. Well, what I found interesting so. is that he, he spoke the truth. <laughs> right. And even in this, in this next section that we're talking about is, is he saw as he was in the beginning of being stoned, he saw the heavens opened up and Jesus standing at, at the right hand. And he literally just spoke what he saw, what he knew mm -hmm. to be true. And, uh, and ultimately that was going to. And, and he also out. did that as, and I would encourage you to take the time to read all of chapter seven. Uh, and if you want a refresher on the history of Israel, Stephen mm -hmm. gives it to these people he is confronting. He takes them from um, pretty much how it all started to where they are now. And he describes how God act and moved through various people yep. uh, through those years and ages. And uh, he holds up their own history as a way of saying, this is who God's always been. This is what God has done. Uh, You've, you've missed the boat here. Yeah, you, you may understand this, this, and this about God's actions in, in and through the law of Moses, mm -hmm. but here's who God is in the person of Jesus. Well, I think what he was doing is holding up a mirror. Yep. A mirror that they had to look at and say, I don't, I don't like what I see, because right. it is the truth. Well, it, it's interesting that um, in Luke's gospel, Jesus does something similar. He goes into the synagogue and mm -hmm. teaches. Yep. He reads from the, uh, the scroll of mm -hmm. the prophet Isaiah. And uh, it talks about who God is. Yep. And then Jesus turns and looks at them and says, uh, was there no one faithful in Israel? So God had to go for Naaman, you know, yeah. the, a foreigner or the widow that Elijah yeah. served. And they try to kill Jesus, if you remember yeah. that. Yeah. So it's a similar, I don't know if it's yeah. similar or not, but there's a parallel there. There's something there that, um, of using the history, the stories to say this is who God really is, only to have the crowds, in this case, this crowd of religious people react violently. Yeah. Well, you, I think it's interesting you point that out because there's a lot of similarities between Stephen and Stephen's words mm -hmm. and the words that Jesus used. You know, even, even Stephen well, said, I commit my spirit at the end, which is very right. much a shout out to, to right. Christ. It's a, it is, uh, it's following that yeah. pattern. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't, uh, he does so in a way that that when people witness it, they see something in his death, yeah. uh, similar to how the, the Roman centurion saw yeah. something in Jesus' death. I just want to read you a couple of uh, what may have got Stephen killed, by the way. Uh, this is Acts chapter 7, verses 51 uh, through 53. You stiff-necked people, <laughs> uncircumcised in heart and ears, are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors did used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one and how you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels and yet you have not kept it. <laughs> That's probably not the, a way yeah. to win friends yeah. and influence people. And yeah. Um, so maybe we don't do that for the call to worship this week. I would say no, but maybe so. But, yeah. but it's, it's also a it, we, we can't just read this from one side yeah. because we read it from um, our perspective as Christians, but maybe that's a warning to us too. Maybe that's a word that God wants us to hear. Where have we come up short into living to our own ideals? Yeah. I mean, we say certain things. Yeah. We say 
Everyone's welcome, but do we really welcome everybody? We say Jesus loves everybody, but do we love everybody? Uh, and so the problem I have with scripture is it turns itself back on me mm -hmm. and asks me hard questions that I don't always want to deal yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes we often struggle with the messenger when it's really the message that yeah. needs to get through to and, us. And so we have to be a little bit careful of just reading this in a purely triumphant way because we too can so easily become that which we rail against. Yeah. Yeah. And what we see through the history of the church, and if Stephen were standing with us here today, he could look back over those 2,000 years and go, oh my gosh, who told you to do an inquisition? Yeah. Who told you to burn people at the stake? Yeah. Who told you to throw Galileo in jail because he said that the earth goes around the sun, right? Yeah, so yeah. we have our own accounting. Yeah. Uh, but this should remind us that God's work is in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is always pushing us to be open to who God really yeah. is. Yeah, that's right. I wanted to talk for a minute about the reaction of mm -hmm. the Sanhedrin, the reaction of the crowd as, as he's <laughs> so, finished his so they, lesson. When they became enraged and ground their teeth at yeah. Stephen? Yeah, and that's funny. I was thinking about the, the gnashing of teeth. Yeah. You've, you've heard that, I think it's seven different times in the Gospels, Jesus mentioned the gnashing of teeth in reference to hell or people mm -hmm. in hell. And here we find a very, uh, 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 these are the most religious people in yeah. Israel. The, the most religious, the, the top of the top of the, religious yeah. order and they're gnashing their teeth it's you, you almost can't can't miss the connection that mm -hmm. the most religious among us sometimes are missing it yeah yeah Just that's that's the problem i have with <laughs> most of what jesus teaches yeah. is that most of his words of condemnation and warning mm -hmm. are not for uh the people in the pews it's yeah. for the people in the pulpits yeah that's what worries me yeah um but it, it also opens us up to see that look, we can all miss it, mm -hmm. right? Stephen, and, and in this case, they're not embodying who God is. They, they're not even living into the, the best, into their own laws at yeah. this point, are they? Yeah, not I mean, at all. Is there a trial? No, there's no trial. Right. I mean, this is completely against the law. Right. What's about to happen is completely against right. the law. It's a mob killing. Yeah. Uh, it's not only against um, the law of Moses because there should have been some kind of uh, reckoning some kind of, if they really wanted to proceed yeah. with this they should have had some kind of hearing yeah. some kind of conversation but it's also against the Ro the law of the Roman yeah. Empire yeah. and we have to remember they were under the rule of the Romans the Romans specifically forbade the Jews from yeah. capital punishment yeah. because I mean that's the greatest control the state can have is the ability to kill somebody yeah. and they would not give that power to the Jews if you remember of course, Jesus' story, that's why they have to take him to right. Pilate in order to get the Romans to crucify yeah, Jesus. That's right. So this, yeah. this is, uh, it, it, so in regard to Jesus' death, this has no similarity in that regard that the Romans are not involved in this. But there are some similarities, and you point you. We were discussing those a little early earlier. Would you lift those up? The for similarities us? between how Stephen dies and how Jesus dies. Yeah. Well. Um, you know, Stephen, before, as he's being stoned, um, first of all, I don't know if people know this, but we, we hear the word stoning and we <laughs> think that he <laughs> just rocks. stood there and they maybe tossed pebbles or little nice. tiny rocks at him, but he was actually um, thrown into a pit of sorts and they stood above him and around him. And, um, mm -hmm. would, and that probably would have been a cistern, um, yeah. a place hollowed out in a rock for the to retain water because water is precious in the Middle East. It's yeah. hard to come by, so cisterns are common. And they probably would have thrown him into a dry cistern. Yeah, yeah. And then they would uh, drop drop some stones upon them. I mean, and not little. Not little ones. Think, think as big as they could pick up. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, at least decent size small boulders. Yeah. So that is unlike how Jesus died, yeah. but, but certainly a brutal, brutal mm. execution right. um, that wouldn't have lasted too long. Um, and I, I think it's interesting that Stephen, before he passes away, before he loses consciousness, he looks up to heaven, mm -hmm. sees, the, it says he saw the glory of God. I'm mm -hmm. not exactly sure what that would have right. looked like to Stephen, yeah. but, he, but he, what he did see was Jesus was standing at the right hand, which uh, you can't help but when you hear the language standing at the right hand or at the right hand of God, that would have, that would have conjured a lot of uh, images for someone in the Jewish mind of, of being on the right hand of God, the right hand being a, a place mm -hmm. of authority, a place of power. But for Jesus to stand, 
it almost is picturing that they killed Jesus because he claimed to be God, mm -hmm. and now Stephen is claiming that the deceased, crucified, crook, criminal Christ is standing in a place of authority. No wonder they, they came at Stephen mm -hmm. with such a blasphemous... Uh, well, and it, it challenged everything they knew. Yeah. Um, it challenged yeah. their power structures, it challenged their authority, and so they ultimately weren't going to put up with that. Yeah. Um, now, where it is similar to Jesus' death um, is it's brutal. Uh, it is quicker, although Jesus' mm. death, crucifixion-wise, oh. was relatively quick by yeah. crucifixion standards. This, is, this wouldn't have lasted very long. It would have been, those moments would have been painful and horrific. Mm. But, but Stephen uh, says some things that remind us of Jesus. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to read this. While they were stoning Stephen, and this is chapter 7, verse 59 and 60. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Mm -hmm. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Uh, and, and that's reminiscent of Jesus saying, you know, it is finished. Yeah. Uh, and it's reminiscent of Jesus saying, Father, forgive them. Yeah, Father, yeah. forgive them. So... That's, um, so, you know, here's Stephen following Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's following in Jesus' footsteps in so many ways. And I think he follows Jesus because he knows this is a reality. And he's got an eye on what's most important. And when we think about giving everything for Christ, um, it's, uh, it reminds me of one of my favorite authors and preachers who mm -hmm. died a few years ago named Fred Craddock. And uh, Fred Craddock talks about how when he was a little boy, he would imagine being a martyr, right? Mm. They'd pull me out, put me on li in, the, in the line and say, do you not deny Jesus? And he said, and he would bravely say no, and then the bullets would fly and people would weep. He said, what he realized as he got older was no one was out going to ask me to do that, but I was going to be asked to make other sacrifices. And mm. would I be as willing yeah. to do that? Some of us may stand up and go, well, yeah, if, if, if a foreign regime took over America and demanded to me, to me to renounce my Christianity, I would say no and gladly die and very well may be willing yeah. to do that, but not be willing to, I don't know, give up cable TV so they can give more to the church. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, it, it's like we want big, bold sacrifices sometimes, but we've got to start with yeah. small sacrifices in order to work yeah. our way into yeah. that. Stephen starts by sacrificing his time to be a servant. Ultimately, God calls him to this. So I doubt God's going to call anyone watching this podcast today to be stoned to death for the sake of the gospel mm -hmm. or to be murdered for the sake of the gospel. But he's calling us all to make some yeah. type of sacrifice. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, there's a, um, lots of lessons we can pull from Stephen's life, but he spoke truth to power. Mm -hmm. And how many times do we, we're not asked to speak truth to power. We don't get to talk in front of Congress, but you might have to speak truth to your parents. You might have to speak truth to your spouse. You might have to speak truth to your children. And that's, that's powerful. And sometimes we're unwilling to speak truth to whatever the power is in our life um, because of, the, con the, because of the, the sacrifice or the cost of it. Um, and I think, that, I think that's something that we need to, to think through. The other thing that I'm really struck with is obviously through this chapter, we're talking about Stephen being full of the Spirit, full of the Spirit, and he was full of the Spirit in life, but he was really full of the Spirit in death. I mean, even as his last breath, it would take someone full of the Spirit to say, um, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think yeah. about what's happening to you. The Spirit of Christ is in him. The Spirit of Christ is in him. And I think that's really powerful. And I think you're absolutely right. Most of us are probably not going to be called to die for Christ because of our faith. And just living in America it may not be a reality, uh, at least for now. But I think we're all called to live for him. Mm -hmm. And I, that's probably harder yeah. <laughs> in a lot of and, ways. And, and it may be even this Sunday you may be called to come and worship instead of doing any number of things yeah. you could do otherwise. Yeah, that's right. So that's right. Uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to continue this conversation tomorrow, uh, and we're going to talk specifically about how Acts uses this story of Stephen to introduce a new character. So yeah. we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, thank you.